Journey into comics. Poor 360. Journey into wrestling. Foodies watching movies. Adulting in it easy. Podcastrophy. Kids for Sale. Voice Survival Podcast. Crucial Tunes. Gallif Radio. Breeze with Dudes. Dungeons with Dudes. Subscribe to Journey into Comics Network on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, or at journeyintocomics.com. The following, following. The following. Is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. Hey. Hey. What's up? Hey. This is Tyler from Podcast Review, and you're listening to the best of the week. Highlights from all the shows that aired on the network this past week. Kick back, relax, don't tread on my heritage, heritage and enjoy. Heritage, heritage. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Journey Into Comics. Let's get into this Spider-Man Far From Home teaser trailer. Thank you, Spider-Man. Okay, so right away, it's Spider-Man in front of, it's at a homeless charity, so there's, it's a food shelter, and it's a bunch of people who are going to ask questions to Spidey. Aunt May just introduced him, obviously we learned in the previous movie, Spider-Man Homecoming, that May knows who Who's who actually is behind the zoo, which is her nephew, Peter Parker. Holy shit. He uh, you know, gives the thumbs up to the crowd. I love it. Then there's the the that was so good. You know, okay, now here comes Happy Hogan. Here's an interesting thing. He's got the check for five hundred thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure it's from a Stark uh relief fund. But I, I can tell you it is because it's signed by look down here, Pepper Potts. It says co-founder of, uh, I can't actually read that, something Stark Relief Foundation. So, oh, co-founder and chair Stark Relief Foundation. So Pepper Potts signed the check. Happy Hogan has the check. Happy. You look nice. Thank you. You too. Thank you. New dress? Yes, it is. How'd you know? (laughs) What just happened? Okay, so Happy's flirting with May. There's a weird thing going on right now, but Peter looks genuinely offended. He's like, are you really macking on my aunt right in fucking front of me, Happy? Are you kidding me right now, Happy Hogan? Like, that's the look he has on his face. I don't know what exactly he's thinking. And, of course, the one great mystery that this movie at some point is going to have to answer and we're probably going to get that in theaters you got to think they have to do such an amazing job of keeping key elements of what is actually happening in this story out of our sight out of our mind because end game is going to set this movie up so we know it's a, it's it's actually a sequel it might even be kind of like a prequel sequel there are some people that even claim this is the alternate timeline where peter never got off the bus okay so and we'll and we'll dive into the possibilities of that here in a short minute. Let's get back to this trailer. Got to love the Ramones. Fuck yeah. Okay, so he is in his room. Peter's in his room. He looks like he's packing his suitcase. Uh, he's getting socks. The suitcase has got looks like dress pants and stuff. Okay, he's at the the place in the first movie. The little um, sandwich shop on the corner that gets cut up at the bank heist, right? Uh, And it looks like in the background you can actually see that the owner has got pictures with Spider-Man. So, uh, yeah, Top Queen's bodega destroyed in blast. That was his bodega that had been destroyed in the blast, and the deli is destroyed, but pictures of him with Spider-Man, obviously Peter went and was like, hey, man, because, you know, he went and checked on him. Um, going to Europe. School, trip. school trip and then he he's he grabbed a toothbrush now he's taking selfies while he's sl- uh, swinging in the city okay he's going to pick up his passport Peter Parker here to pick up a passport please boom now right here let's talk about it Peter Parker here to pick up a passport please it, it shows his passport it's a picture of Tom Holland it says Peter Parker United States of America Interesting to note, 10 August. Super accurate because Amazing Fantasy 15 came out August of 1963. 
or 62, August of 1962, my fault, uh, August 10th to be exact, and that was the first appearance of Peter Parker. Uh, date of issue July 19th, date of expiration July 18th. Now, I think uh, July 19th is maybe the day this movie comes out. I'm not quite 100% yet. We'll get back to that. Mm-hmm. Pack your suit. Okay. Okay, now he, she says, pack your suit. He looks at the suit. Suit's hanging in the closet. He's looking at it. He's uncertain. The music changed tonally a little bit. He just wants to go on his trip with his friends. He shuts the closet door, okay? Europe doesn't really need a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Okay. Very next thing is he's closing this briefcase with the initials BFP. Anybody? Anyone? Anyone know who BFP is? Benjamin Parker, perhaps? Benjamin F. Parker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ben? They're they're doing it, folks. They're fucking doing it. They're giving it to us. They're giving it to us in subtle little beautiful ways. They're nodding to, alluding to the past. Okay, now hold on. I need to back that up just a skosh. I missed that frame. There's an interesting frame here. Okay, ASM212 is on this boat behind Ned Leeds, who's getting his picture taken by Betty. What ASM? Those letters are specific. ASM. Oh, you mean like amazing Spider Man 212? Hmm. 212. Somebody debuts in Amazing Spider Man 212. It's a first appearance, but I'm just. It's eluding my brain at this point. It's not. It's just I don't want to spoil the trailer. So let's keep getting into it. Just remember ASM 212, folks. We're going to come back to it. You look really pretty. Therefore, I have value. Okay, and I wanted to go back here a little bit because I want to see what's playing at the theater, and I didn't get a chance. I don't know if I can read that shit. Let me look in close real quick. Going to be silent for a second here. I don't know what it is because it's not in English, and I don't speak other languages because I'm an idiot dolt. So, let's continue on. You look really pretty. Therefore, I have value. No, no, that's not right. I'm messing with you. <laughs> you look pretty too. I just want to spend some time with. They're on like um, a, f- a ferry boat, and they're looking at like a, a a hotel that's under development wherever they're at, maybe Venice. MJ, I think she really likes me, dude. That reminds me when I first fell in love. I had just finished my food coffee. Oh man, you know what I forgot? Way back there, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Okay, so right now Ned Leeds has. Uh, an arrow in his neck and a shirt that says danger on danger with a bear going ah and he just just been shot in the neck with a dart and he's going down so nice to finally meet you spider-man motherfucking samuel l jackson back as nick motherfucking fury super exciting to see him let me tell you you're nick fury Put some clothes on. Let's go for a ride. Is he going to be okay like that? Might want to turn him over so he doesn't swallow his tongue. (laughs) Okay, so it says next summer. It looks like they're doing a night mission. Um, Fury's driving a boat. Spidey's in the blue and red suit. This may be early in the movie, possibly. He's at... Okay, now it's a picture of Nick Fury. He's at the top of a high tower. London sightseers, you got MJ, Betty next to Ned. Again, Betty and Ned, maybe they're having a budding little relationship here. I like that. Um, Ned with Parker. Okay, so it looks like London Bridge is under attack. There's a lot of smoke and fire and something going on. Parker in a darker Spider-Man suit with a bright white logo on his back. It looks bitching in the kitchen, which is where I am right now. Uh, okay, right here, minute 38. Nice pause. We are 138. Because right now I see what looks like Maria Hill and it looks like Mr. Nick Fury uh, shooting at what looks to be Sandman. Sandman obviously first appears in Amazing Spider-Man number four. So Sandman, you know, here's the weird thing. 
it looks like it could be Sandman, and you could even go so far as to call it Sandman. It looks, it has the feel of what Sandman maybe is. Maybe it's not actually uh, Sandman, who's for some fucking reason. Sandman's name, his real name, is escaping me right now. I keep wanting to say Thomas Hayden Church because that's the guy that played him in that that one movie. But um, let's see. Or it wasn't. Well, it wasn't Amazing Spider-Man Four. What was it? Was it two? Is that? Am I mistaken? Is it Amazing Spider-Man Two? No, no, no. I mean the comic book, you dickhead. Not the comic. The comic book. I'm trying to search the comic while I look at this. I want to make sure I get this right, you guys, because, you know, let's just fucking, um, Spider-Man, Sandman, first appearance. Damn it, I had all this other stuff ready, and then I fucked it. It is amazing, Spider-Man 4. I was fucking right. I had it right. September 63 here. Uh, but William Baker, Flint Marco is his name. Flint Marco is the actual Sandman. I And I thought that, too, and I'm... Fucking idiot for not trusting my gut. You got gifts, Parker, but you have a job to do. Again, back to an amazing shot of some lightning, possibly some electricity, possibly mis- uh, not Mysterio, possibly Electro, maybe? I don't think so. I think that's miscalculation. You're not going to use Electro right after you guys had him in the Amazing Spider-Man series. As people are assuming that's the thing. You heard it here first, folks. Electro's not going to be in this movie. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up to their narrative, and I'll explain what I think their narrative is going to be here in just one second. Are you going to step up? So I love this shot with Spidey, uh, you know, kind of gliding in with the old school, like, web gliders. Uh, through the fire and the explosions and shit. Another building is exploding and Spidey's coming out of it. Now right here at 149, you get a shot of something that's like a fire body. And that is definitely, almost 100% confirmed, going to be Molten Man. Let me tell you, pretty fucking awesome to have Molten Man appear. Um, Mark Raxton might not be Molten Man, and again, I don't know that's going to fit the narrative. I'm just saying that the visual creation of Molten Man is is now existing on screen, uh, and I think that's a smart way to mar- for Marvel to do it. You don't you can play with a lot of different villains that way. You can creatively do that. You're going to see in a second why this is so creative because you've got now Sandman in the movie, Molten Man's in the movie. Uh, again, maybe not uh, Flint Marco or Mark Raxton, uh, but you you have those two, right? Uh, a little bit further, happy on the plane. It looks like there's electricity. Some uh, Again, this is on the bridge. Um, people are trying to get away. That, that, who is that? That last shot. I didn't... I tried to... I meant to... Okay. Oh, okay. So it's, check it out, it is the S.H.I.E.L.D. stealth suit. So essentially, you saw earlier in the trailer, it seems like Spidey doesn't bring his suit. And I'm thinking initially he has the black suit, which is the stealth suit that Fury's going to give him. Fury's going to be like, Stark told me if ever you needed this, here's this. Boom, it's it's the temp thing. I also feel like there's some other things that are going to get unlocked in the movie. And I like that they're playing and utilizing with multiple different um, suits for Spidey to have in this movie. Boom. You just saw a little bit of it in the MJ, and it's looking at a different thing in a different scene. It's, you know, nighttime and not daytime. Uh, clever thing, but they go back to it and, and a minute 56. So 138, 149, 156-ish, 157. In the kind of, like Every 10 seconds, they've introduced Sandman, Molten Man, and now 156. You guys remember ASM 212 back there earlier in the trailer? How about that's because Amazing Spider-Man 212 featured the debut first appearance of Morris Bench, also known as Hydro Man. Now, a lot of people who are fans of the Amazing Spider-Man series are fans of the animated series from the 90s, and Hydro Man had a couple like prominent things in that television show. Uh, he does first debut here in 212. Uh, the Coming of Hydro Man, I think, was the name of the, the issue. January 81 is when it debuted. So you've got three... De- okay, so now sand, fire, and water. Okay, you're probably not going to have a wind one. That's silly. How are you going to... 
And I mean, I guess technically you could because Cyclone was also a Spider-Man character. So now you've got all four elementals if you really want to go that route. Uh, but here's what I think the narrative is going to be in a second. We're going to finish up this trailer. We only got about uh, another minute left. What are you going to do about it? Parker gets punched by the water. Everybody's running. Okay, there's some green smoke. It looks sick. Fucking A, it's Jake motherfucking Gyllenhaal, broke back Mysterio, showing up to kick your asses. You don't want any part of this. I end up putting four... Uh, options on Twitter and two on Facebook, but the Twitter one didn't really take off, so I need to retool that for episode three. But Facebook just had two and ended up being pretty close. It was about 2016. No, it wasn't quite 26. I would say it was about 54 to 46 uh, in favor of the border wall. Now, what do you think when you think of the border wall? Now, not to be confused with your favorite bookstore chain, you know, the one that closed in 2011, once everyone realized you can get all of your books you ever want on Amazon without actually having to leave the house and get to stay in your pajamas all day and order books and come to your house. And then, yeah, before Amazon was now the largest corporation in the world. Yeah, so not that borders. The border wall. Now, what kind of comes around when you think of a border wall? The Great Wall of China, the Berlin Wall... Pink Floyd's the wall? Now, I don't really know what you're thinking here. But the border wall isn't a new thing. It's been around for quite a while now. Um, not necessarily the wall that a lot of you are thinking of, which is which was what we'll get to. But, like I said, the Berlin Wall, the Great Wall of China, are all other examples of what's going on in terms of borders. Now, borders come in really all sorts of sizes. Because if you kind of think about it, there's the original borders were geographic. They were the borders between, through by mountains or by oceans or by lakes or rivers. But there are many different types of borders. There are political borders. Now, political borders are imposed on the world through human agency. That means that although a political border may follow a river or mountain range, it's so if you're just not automatically define the political border, even though it may be a major physical barrier to crossing. Political borders are often classified whether or not they follow conspicuous physical features of, on the earth, as opposed to natural borders. Now, natural borders, like I said before, are geographical features that present natural obstacles to communication and transport. Existing phys, uh, political borders are often formalization of such historical natural obstacles. Some geographical features that often constitute natural borders are oceans, rivers, lakes, forests, in mountain ranges. Uh, throughout history, uh, technological advances have reduced the cost of transport and communication across the natural borders that has reduced the significance of natural borders over time as wrote political borders that have been formalized more recently, such as those in Africa or um, the Americas, simply conform less to natural borders than very old borders such as those in Europe and Asia. Now we also have geometric borders. Now geometric borders or geometric boundaries are formed by straight lines, such as lines of latitude or longitude, or occasionally arcs, like you can see in Pennsylvania and Delaware, regardless of the physical and cultural features of the area. Some little boundaries are often found around the states that developed out of colonial holdings, such as in North America, Africa, and the Middle East. Now, flat borders, which is something that I just don't quite understand, is a generalization of the idea of geometric borders, the idea that a flat boundary by which is meant any sort of boundary that does not track an underlying bona fide, a physical discontinuity, Flat in Latin means let it be done, or a decision. So flat barriers are typically the product of human demarcation, such as demarking electoral districts or postal districts. So if you look at kind of how like county lines are drawn, this thing baffles me is like I'll look at counties or cities, and there's just like, oh, the city kind of wraps around this feature, so and then so it counts, gets this. Or the fact that, oh, hey, like, I live in Illinois, so... The fact that O'Hare Airport, despite being so far away, is technically a part of Chicago. And if you look at like the Chicago map, it, has, it kind of just jets out in this weird word balloon-shaped feature that engulfs O'Hare Airport so they get those taxes. Because it's Chicago and they're going to 
fight for it every chance they get. But back to what I was saying. So that's kind of another thing of flat borders. Now we have relict borders. Relict borders is a former boundary which may no longer be a legal boundary at all. However, the former presence of the boundary can still be seen in the landscape. For instance, the boundary between East and West Germany is no longer an international border, but it can still be seen because of historical markers on the landscape and is still a cultural and economic division in Germany. We also have lines of control. A line of control refers to a militarized buffer border between two or more nations that yet is yet to be resolved or implemented for permanent border status. LOC borders are under military control that are not recognized an official international border. Formerly known as a ceasefire line, an LOC was first created as a way to buffer war borders during the Simla Agreement, similar to a ceasefire line. An LOC is the result of war, stalemates, and land ownership conflict. We also have maritime borders, which... Uh, maritime borders are a division enclosing an area in the ocean where it, a nation has exclusive rights over the mineral and biological resources, encompassing maritime features, limits, and zones. Um, we also have airspace borders. Like you always think of like international airspace and airspace is the atmosphere located within a country's controlled international and maritime borders. All sovereign countries hold the right to regulate and protect airspace under the international laws of air sovereignty. The horizontal boundaries of airspace are similar to the policies of high seas in the maritime law. Airspace extends 12 nautical miles from the coast of a country and it holds responsibility for protecting its own airspace unless under NATO peacetime protection. Um, and then... When you get into out of those type of, you also have international borders. So the different types of international borders are an open border is the deregulation and lack of regulation on the movement of persons between nations and jurisdictions. It does not apply to trade or movement between privately owned land areas. Most nations have open borders for travel within their nation of travel. Examples of that include the United States and Canada. However, only a handful of nations have deregulated open borders with other nations. An example of this is being the European Union. Members under the Schengen Agreement, S-H-E-N-G-E-N, Schengen Agreement. Open borders used to be very common amongst all nations, however, post-World War I led to the regulation of open borders, making them less common and no longer feasible for most industrialized nations. Now, we also have regulated borders. Now, regulated borders have a varying degree of control on the movement of persons and trade between nations and jurisdictions. Most industrialized nations have regulation on entry and require one or more of the following procedures, visa check, Passport check or customs checks. Most regulated borders have regulation on immigration, types of wildlife, and plants, and illegal objects such as drugs or weapons. Overall, border regulations are placed by national and local governments can vary depending on nation and current political or economic conditions. Some of the most regulated borders in the world include Australia, the United States, Israel, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United Arab Emirates. These borders have government-controlled border agencies and organizations that enforce border regulation policies or on and within their borders. We we'll also have demilitarized zones, or a DMZ, is a border separating two or more nations, groups, or militaries that have agreed to prohibit the use of military activity or force within the border bounds. A DMZ can act as a war boundary, ceasefire line, wildfire preserve, or in some cases as a de facto international border. The example of demilitarized international borders is the 30th parallel between North and South Korea, other notable DMZ zones include Antarctica and outer space. Cons uh, an outer space consisting of all space 100 miles away from the Earth's surface. Both are preserved for world research and exploration. Well, that's also good to know. There are... Yeah. And there are different um, border economics that we have to worry about. Um, the presence of borders uh, often foster certain economic features or anomalies... Whenever two jurisdictions come into contact, special economic opportunities arise for border trade. Smuggling provides a classic case. Uh, contra uh, contrary rise of border region may flourish on the provision of excise or import-export services, legal or quasi-legal, corrupt or legitimate. Different regulations on either side of the border may encourage services to position themselves at or near the border, thus... Provision of pornography, of prostitutes, of alcohol, fireworks, and or narcotics may cluster around borders, city limits, county lines, ports, and airports in more planned and official context. Special economic zones often tend to cluster near borders or ports. How about that? Um, this really is coming to politics in recent years, and this is kind of where we get into what we're really talking about today. And that's political borders have a varying a variety of meanings for those whom they affect. Many borders in the world have checkpoints where border control agents inspect persons or goods crossing the boundary. 
In much of Europe, controls on persons were abolished by the 1985 Schengen Agreement and subsequent European Union legislation. Since the Treaty of Amsterdam, the uh, the competence to pass laws on crossing internal and external borders in the European Union and the associated uh, Schengen area states, Iceland, Norway, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein uh, lies exclusively within the jurisdiction of the European Union, except where United States have used a specific right to opt out. The United Kingdom, Ireland, which maintain the common travel area among themselves. The United States has notably increased measures taken in border control on the Canada-United States border and the United States-Mexico border during its war on terrorism, the war on terrorism leading from the 9-11 terrorist attack. One American writer said that the 3,600-kilometer or 2,200-mile U.S.-Mexico border is probably the world's longest boundary between a first-world and third-world country. Historic borders such as the Great Wall of China, the uh, Maginot Line and Hadrian's Wall have played a great many roles and has been marked in different ways while the Stone Walls, the Great Wall of China and the Roman Hadrian's Wall in Britain had military functions the entirety of the Roman border were very porous which encouraged Roman economic activities with neighbors on the other hand a border like the Maginot Line was entirely military and was meant to prevent any access it was to be World War II to France by its neighbors, Germany. Germany ended up going around the magnet line through Belgium, just as it had done in World War I. So, we kind of talked about the uh, that and, like, the border barriers. So, like, a border barrier is a separation barrier that runs along the international border. Such barriers are typically instruction for border control purposes, such as curbing illegal immigration, human trafficking, and smuggling. In case of a disputed or unclear border, erecting a barrier can serve as a de facto unilateral consolidation of a territorial claim that could be can supersede formal delimitation. Examples of border walls include that of the ancient Great Wall of China, a series of walls separating China from nomadic empires to the north. The construction of border barriers increased in the early 2000s. Half of all border barriers built since World War II ended in 1945 were built after 2000. And there's a lot. Like, you could look at the list of the of border barriers. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> like, every major country, continent, it just everywhere has one. <clears throat> and that gets us from borders to border control. And border controls are measures taken by a country or block of countries to monitor its borders in order to regulate the movement of people, animals, and goods. And now there are multiple aspects of border control. The big ones are for quarantine. Quarantine policies exist to control the spread of disease when applied to a component of border control system policies focused primarily on mitigating the entry of infected individuals, plants, or animals into a country. Big problem you can see with this is when non or invasive species come into fact, like you think the Asian carp or I always forget the snake. I don't know if it's the not the python. I don't know if it's the python. It's whatever snake is kind of currently infesting the Florida Everglades, which was never meant to be there. So quarantining kind of prevents those things from happening. We also have customs, so each country has its own laws and regulations for the import and export of goods into and out of country, which is customs authority enforces. The import and export of some goods may be restricted or forbidden, in which cases customs controls enforce such policies. Customs forming at borders can also entail collecting excise tax and preventing the smuggling of a dangerous illegal goods. Customs duty is to tariff or tax on the importation or exportation of goods. Now, border security, which is a kind of the big thing right now, uh, border security measures are border control policies adopted by a country or group of countries to fight against unauthorized travel or trade across its borders, uh, to limit illegal immigration, combat transnational crime, prevent wanted criminals from traveling. In India, border security focuses primarily on the Bangladeshi and Pakistani borders in order to deter unlawful immigration and drug trafficking. From Bangladesh, India is constructing the India-Bangladesh barrier. On the Pakistan Pakistani border, the Border Security Force aims to prevent the infiltration of Indian territory by terrorists from Pakistan and other countries in the West. Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, etc. American borders focus primarily on the Mexican-American border. Security along this border is composed of many distinct elements, including physical barriers, patrol routes, lighting, and the deployment of border patrol personnel. President Donald Trump's person proposal to build a wall on the border was a major feature of his campaign, now, since attempted to have Congress pay $18 billion for its costs in the short term, Democrats and members of the Republican Party who do not support President Trump argue that 
Other measures would be more effective at reducing illegal immigration to building a wall, including border surveillance, and increase the number of customs agents. Similar to India's barrier with Bangladesh and the proposed wall between America and Mexico, Iran has constructed a wall on its frontier with Pakistan. The wall aims to reduce unauthorized border crossings and stem the flow of drugs. It is also a response to terrorist attacks, notably the one on the Iranian border town of Zidane on February 17th of 2007, which killed 13 people, including nine Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Border security has, over the first two decades of the century, also become a major concern in the Schengen area, specifically as a result of the European migrant crisis. The walls of Melilla and at Quata, uh, on Spain's border with Morocco, are part of the trend towards increasing border security in response to an unprecedented rise in both refugees and economic Migrants from countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Red meat, we crave sustenance. Guys, we are not invading my aunt. What kind of Oreos did she use? The overstuffed ones? Oh, shit. Talking mm-hmm. mushrooms. That's something we have to utilize on the podcast is talking about that. Let's get right into it. We have some snacks that we tried to yeah. discuss on this podcast. We have two new kinds of Oreo that are in existence. V- Some new limited edition Oreos. I feel like you should go grab them out of the cabinet so I can take a, get a picture of like both Oreos side by side because they're amazing. <laughs> sure, I'll go uh, get them. But while... By the way, I have to say, yeah, sure. let's preface this Please. before we go on. I've only had two of these cookies. I haven't even tried the dark chocolate truffle, whatever the fuck those ones are. You're trying that right now. And on I've podcast. only had two of the overstuffed cookies. Worst sharer anyway. Yeah. And he eats all the cookies. Tell how many did you have so far? Nathaniel? <laughs> oh man, you busted me out and then walked away. That was a gangster move. The <laughs> Fuck. Oh, she even did the suck it thing. And she walked away. I'm like stone cold stunned right now. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, no, but for real, I had like, oh, and then she John Cena be goddamn. God. This is crazy. Okay, I got these Oreos. Okay, so first and foremost, I had six of the mega stuffs or the most. Oh stuff. my god, <laughs> they're the really stuff. fucking. Oh good. yeah, it the says limited edition Oreo, the most stuff, S T U F. And it's OG <laughs> Oreo cream. It's not like the weird shit they use in the mega stuffs or the double stuffs or whatever the fuck it is. There's one of those stuffs that tastes really funky. The mega stuff. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take that. This is, I'm going to take one of these two yeah. just for a picture purpose, okay? So I'm going to try for the first time the dark chocolate flavor Oreo, yeah. which I feel like I'm already going to want like a little slice of strawberry on. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? These would also be really good in this uh, dip that Sarah and I have been making. This truffle dip with a uh, Oreo and cream cheese and all sorts of shit. Mm. Oh, those have been so good. Can I just tell you guys how happy I am to be able to take a fucking picture with my cellular telephone again? Mm-hmm. Oh, phone. man. Yeah. I'm probably going to talk about this on Monday's JIC, which I haven't done yet this time travelly, but... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, getting a new phone is cool because now I have my camera, like, for some reason, one day the whole entire thing just fell off my phone and broke. And I was like, what the fuck? And I like, looked it up, and it's a thing. Some Samsung phones, they, like, melt off. Great story. This cookie sucks. Really? You don't like it? No. Uh, no, the dark chocolate one is definitely, like, making me really thirsty. And I feel like it has very little flavor. It's just like I'm eating... A chocolate cookie with no cream filling in it. Oh, thanks. Bam, water. water. Beautiful. Helping I also it out. have my, my coffee in my little owl mug here. Would you describe that as damn fine coffee? I would. It is uh, the Bright Sky Blend, the Starbucks <laughs> yeah. uh, meat. What is it? A blonde? It's a blonde roast mm-hmm. for our coffee enthusiasts yeah. out there. It's pretty freaking good. And it tastes really good in a mug that's in the shape of an owl. Mm-hmm. Or with owls on it. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get back to these yeah. Oreos real quick. I want to give like kind of like a full like thing. So one. you don't like the dark chocolate? She's giving me half this dark chocolate yeah, one. I'm like reaching for the over stuff. You, you want the mega to stuff. me the dark chocolate ones tasted like an extension of the cookie. Like yeah. if you're the kind of person that likes to just eat the cookie of the Oreo, which I am, I like that. Uh, then 
you will like the dark chocolate ones. They kind of have like a brownie sort of taste in the middle. That's why I don't think them. I like it because it just tastes like there's no cream in it. It just tastes like cookie. Yeah, it it's tastes like, like a brownie cookie. to me, yeah. like a chewy. Yeah, it's crunchy um, brownie. I liked it because I like weird bitter stuff. I like black coffee. Apparently, I'm a sociopath, according to Thanks, you Facebook. Know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for all the, you know, factual, not fake news that everybody keeps tagging me in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am quite on the opposite end, you guys. I just think it's hysterical because you're not crazy or like a psychopath. So it's funny when we see things like that, you know, just like, wait a minute, you drink straight up. I mean, you drink straight up black coffee and give no fucks. I can't believe that just happened. You just mm-hmm. drop some of your cream mm-hmm. on the ground like a. That's like There's one too yeah. much. That's like one cream. regular cookie worth of cream you dropped on the okay. fucking ground. Well, yeah. while she's still working on that cream, I'm gonna tell you about my Sunday. That about my How Sunday since that was a. Th- was that pretty loud? That, that was. was loud, I'm so sorry. Loud rip. Oops. The, bo- the top That's of the, the Oreo <laughs> package almost shames you. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> like you cannot get into that quietly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just. You want to sneak this snack at 3 o'clock in the morning next to your loved ones? It's not no fucking happening. No. No. You get ratted out every time. Look, uh, my Sunday was delicious. It was because I'm stuck with the lactose-free, okay? there's n- Briars is the only one that makes real ice cream that actually tastes like their regular vanilla ice cream. I can vouch for that because I always get the Briar's yeah. Natural Vanilla Ice Cream. It's always been my favorite forever. It mm-hmm. tastes so good, and milkshakes particularly. Mm-hmm. And having been eating the lactose-free when you know we're having ice cream, mm-hmm. there really isn't much of a difference. Yeah. It tastes the same. Yeah, so that's like my limit. So the Sundays have been like a big deal for me to have like real ones. You know, I'm not knocking other frozen treats that have gotten me by over the years, but... You know, the selection has been poor. Yeah, and sometimes you just get over it. But look, these most stuff Oreos, man, if one cookie is all you need on a little sundae, this cream, there is so much of it. You can take it and, like, put little, like, drops of it, like little gumdrop sizes almost of Oreo cookie cream in your sundae, right? And then you crush up the cookie at the end on the top. And it's really it, creamy. It's, it's not like flaky. It's like creamy. Yeah. But like in the Sunday, it held its shape the whole time I was eating the Sunday, oh. but it didn't become frozen. So it was like a blizzard. So it was literally like Oreo, like it tasted like an extension of Oreo cookies as it, as you would, one would imagine the cookies and cream uh, Sunday is supposed to taste. You know, sometimes you get ripped off by that. I, you know, I like this ratio of cre- like having like the, the, chunks of cream in there as it were it's like it was like next level okay so i highly recommend doing that with these gigantic cookies you will be very shocked like but the cream is good because like the mega stuff i don't know if you know like if you are oreo aficionados and you follow this new trend of all of these fancy new oreos they keep coming out with but the most or this cream like we were saying before is like the og oreo cream minus you know i'm not talking about like the 90s oreos we all miss them rip okay all right they're gone but this one is not like the horrible horrible mega stuff oreos I don't know what is wrong with the cream in those Oreos. It's Do you, different. It's different. There's something wrong with it. It's like frosting. It's not the same. No, it's not the same. And it's not like the old Oreo cream either because that used to be a little more like frosting. It didn't just come off. Like it was a challenge to get the cookie and the cream apart mm-hmm. cleanly. Now without it is breaking no, the cookie or without, the cream like mm-hmm. breaking off. Into- right. I need to interject something about that breaking it apart. I got really good at separating Oreo cookies, and I think that the most stuff... I believe that about you. (laughs) Listen, I think the most stuff Oreo cookie was made by one of two kinds of people, either a fat kid or a stoner kid or a fat stoner kid, because check it out. So the perfect person is designing Oreo cookies. Correct. So it's like (laughs) four Oreos worth of stuff is how much they dedicated to the most stuff. And it's like you guys said, it's it's not the OG OG like you were saying, but it's Mm -hmm. the current... 
original cream flavor of Oreo. It has that consistency, that that mm-hmm. creamy texture, mm-hmm. and it just real good. It just <laughs> it's a two biter for me, which usually Oreos are one biters. Let me just say no for Nate. I've been eating the, <laughs> that one cookie that I started at the beginning of the show. That one I just now finished it. Yeah, it took me that long to eat that one cookie. Yeah, basically what you and have I've to had do. I've had three cookies in that time, and one of them was the most stuff. Like if you bite into wow. this cookie, the cream squishes like all all up, out. Like yeah, I dropped some on the floor. Yeah, it does its <laughs> thing. It. So it's you got to like take the one cookie off the top and use it like a scoop for the like that's exactly the rest what I did. of it, and then you eat it like that. Like you have to like pick at it. It's amazing. It's, so it's like a Dunkaroos. Yeah, it's that's like exactly this what I just did hybrid mm-hmm. treat cookie it's great it's got yeah but you know what yeah, i think that. my favorite one that we will never find again was those freaking fruity pebbles ones oh yeah they the are ones like that were legendary Earth too man yeah we found them at the store one magical day walgreens yeah, yeah. they were like fr- called like fruity crisp or fruit crisp or something yeah it was like, like fruity crispy. pebbles yeah yeah but it didn't say fruity pebbles it said something it was called something else but it was like the, they were the golden oreos with f- like fruity pebble flavor in, and then yeah, and little like crunchy pieces and, yeah. of like rice well, cereal in the cream yeah. and they were like the most perfect oreo well, ever amazing. and then do you remember that they did the the oreo mystery oreo challenge and yeah. those were the uh-huh. same uh-huh. fucking and ones and we bought them and i was so <laughs> happy i was like thinking to myself i was like I really, really, really want this to be the Fruity Pebble ones, you know, and then we opened it up and there they were. You could smell it too. Mm-hmm. It was I could like, smell boom. it. I was like, oh my God, these are them. I know it. I know it in my heart. <laughs> we have to buy them, guys. Yeah. Then we did. I also have something to say about Fruity Pebbles that's uh, relevant. <laughs> I recently bought a box of Fruity Pebble cereal that now comes with marshmallows. Yeah, these hybrid oh. cereals, man, they're coming out with. I mean, it's a hybrid world. Those corn flakes with yeah. the marshmallows, the frosted, frosted flakes. flakes. Frosted flakes. Oh. Frosted yeah, corn with the flakes Lucky with Charms them. marshmallows. God, like, what? Man, that was like the, they're the most, it's the most perfect cereal. Yeah, it's so good. Nobody likes the other crap the Lucky Charms come with. They just eat no. it because the marshmallows are in there. That's the only reason it's tolerated. Yeah, yeah nobody would have that. You, I feel like they sold that cereal. It wasn't like Alphabets or something. Do you remember Alphabet, those? Cereals? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Alphabet. and they were like uh-huh. Lucky Charms without the marshmallows. Like right. they were all like cardboardy Lame. and yeah, yeah. It's like they were trying to be like a Frosted Flake, but they were poor you job. Know, there's poor this, job. There's this place. Uh, I can't remember. It's the Amish place around here. What the fuck is it? Called? I don't know what it's called. There's an Amish town mm. uh, close by to where we live. Yeah, like there an is. Hour. And I forget. Uh, oh no, it's not. Mm, it's not. It's kind of by like Shipshawana. Shipshawana. There it is. You I just had this. I had to go back to my you like slumber it. party days for right? that one. <laughs> totally. <laughs> this has been like a like a, a little camp out kind of day because we're snowed in. It's yeah. snowing like a motherfucker outside. And we've just been eating all this kid food. Yeah. <laughs> and pot roast. Sundays, it's like yeah. an Oreo Sunday day. <laughs> Lazy Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, Shipshawana. Shipshawana, yeah. yeah. There's a place in Shipshawana that sells bags of the marshmallow uh, cereal bites. Oh. That's just a bag yeah, of yeah. the marshmallows. Mm. And my friend, uh, shout out to my friend Carrie. She got me a bag of it when she was out there like a couple years ago. Oh, I, think that was like, I remember. I think that was right when we first met you. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was so fucking pleased because it was like yeah. just the marshmallows and none of the work. Yeah, because Ollie was it. obsessed with it. Oh, Oliver was so happy. <laughs> I know. Oh my god, well, I, I was able to bribe well, him and like it, it, those ba- that like bag of marshmallows two. like helped to like potty train yeah. him. And, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lasted a while. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, marshmallows and pizza. Yeah, it was yeah. the potty training miracle. <laughs> yeah, he'd have to eat pizza on the potty to yeah. sit there. <laughs> <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> he is my child. Oh, oh anyways. Damn, Memories. I wonder if anybody's going to be delivering pizza today in this horrible way. Oh, you know they are. They're making bank. Shit, maybe they Somebody's should make some bank, bank from us. You know who's DoorDash. making I was just, God, you just did it, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Man, Sucka. we found this new, I mean, it's not really new. It's kind of old, but it's new it to us. It is new to us. Because we haven't it's had so this service. It's so new to us that I don't even have it in my town. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. That's a fair assessment, yeah. So DoorDash is this wicked fucking Grubhub delivery service that you Legit, just order guys. the food on your phone from whatever restaurant 
and then they update you when your shit gets there, and you've already paid everything, you've already tipped the motherfucker, they literally walk up, hand you your food, and leave. The end. That is the transaction. It, it is magical for the <laughs> introverts out there. It's Highly magical. Recommended. You pay for it. Now, I mean, like, you, sometimes you get lucky and there's, like, free delivery or, like, dollar delivery specials, but the delivery can get a little steep when they add, because DoorDash takes a fee. Isn't you know, it, like, a, a 10% fee. fee? Yeah, DoorDash will take take a fee, because basically it's, like, Uber for food. That's what we've, yeah. uh, I've sort of assessed about it, you know? These drivers just uh, drive, you know, little food babies around to people all day. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Make commissions and tips. It's magical, yeah. and there's so many restaurants that participate in it around yeah. here, which is yeah. super cool. Yeah, I do like that you can pre-enter a tip and stuff, but mm-hmm. yeah, you got to be... You don't have to deal with people at all, and you right. get your delicious fucking red lobster delivered to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Anything, like... <laughs> Man, you know, <laughs> when we discovered DoorDash, that was like the best day. <laughs> I know. We're like 157 places will deliver here. And we ended what? up settling on Boston Market of oh, all God. places. Well, it's it was because so we had fucking just good, though. Do you know why really I will defend our Boston Market decision? Because <laughs> we had just gone through not having time to get groceries and then also we just so eating busy. fast food for like a week and a half it was just like a, a, yeah, an onslaught No idea how we ended up where we are. <laughs> I have no idea what time it is, but it's almost eight o'clock. I've been having fun with this. I've been uh, having yeah, a lot of fun. Good. Good I have one more thing. Any of you start season two of Punisher yet? I, I started episode one. one of Punisher. So. What? I what? just rewatched it all time, this weekend. Man. I'm just now getting caught up on Game of Thrones. Okay, focus on that. Don't push me. Focus on that. That's I just, important. I just yeah. made my wife watch yeah. all of season one of Punisher. Punisher is brutal as fuck, but I I believe it. Um, I've not watched. A I watched lot episode of the, one last night. I've not watched I've a watched lot of Marvel five. TV. I don't think I've watched any Marvel TV. I haven't watched any of the Marvel shows except the Punisher. I think the Punisher is it, but I think that they're Daredevil's doing, good. I think that That's they're doing think. a very good job, and um, his name, John Bernthal? John Bernthal, is slaying. I think John Bernthal is. He's the reason There's, why I watched he's, it. He's Wolverine. Nobody is ever going to replace Hugh Jackman. You can't pick Rick. You can't Nobody, save Matt. No one's ever going to replace Hugh Jackman. No one's going to replace John Bernthal as the Punisher. Well, John I, Bernthal is the Punisher. Well, and that's the thing. I So, I've kind of stood strong with my opinion that the Tom Jane... Yeah, Thomas Jane was excellent. The Tom Jane as... You know the Punisher film wasn't that bad, especially wasn't that bad. No. People so, people don't appreciate fucking Travolta's performance in yeah. that movie. So it was when a great film. Nate, a couple of weeks ago on Journey into Comics, yep. he did his he read the top fifty Marvel movies of all time, mm-hmm. and Punisher was like forty eight. Yeah, I was like, Are, what? Well, it, the, Puni- the Punisher, Pun- the War Zone, did better than Punisher. Yeah, it's got some How? interesting positions. There. No, this wasn't his list. This was a list he was reading. Okay, mm-hmm. and somehow Punisher War Zone got better than Thomas Jane's Punisher, which I don't even think the Dolph Lundgren Punisher was even on the list. No, nope. <laughs> but so, so I really appreciated Tom Jane. I love that movie. Figures in that. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So I, I really appreciated that film. I mean, I love from Seager. the score to the, you know, for for that short of a movie, which I don't need a three hour long Punisher movie. No. I don't. That would it's be excessive. And That's what we have the series for. You can't do it in a show. You need you need hours to develop the characters. Right. So kind of kind of especially now where we're at in the MCU, I haven't watched any of the Punisher. Mm-hmm. Because I, I just don't have time. Yeah, no, I get. It. I don't have time for all the other bullshit. But I have tried to explain to people the significance of the Marvel um, cinematic universe because it is absolutely unprecedented. What's the what's the number of movies? Eighteen, so nineteen, twenty. 
It's it's something like that. I think it's an right. unbelievable 18. amount of. We story. need to get there with Star Wars. Story. We need to get there with Star Wars. And it can it. Oh my goodness, Tyler! Get Kathleen Kennedy out of that chair. Yes. It can happen because Star Wars is is yeah yeah. You're you're trying to convey a million different fucking ideas with your Marvel shit. You can do it with Star Wars, and and you can do it easier with Star Wars. There's fucking space magic. <laughs> There's space magic they've and done fucking so many, energy weapons. They've done so Just many. Do fuck, it. They've done so many fucked up movies. They do Han Solo, and they're like, "Oh, we need to slow down on Star Wars." Like, what the fuck about all the other dumbass movies that you've done for Marvel? All the dumbass movies you've done in the name of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you decide the Solo is the movie that you're gonna go. Nope. Which wasn't else. even a bad movie. No. No! Nick and I are fired up! We you are know, fired up! You know how when you're watching... Jeff fucking... Bezos! Oh no! You did it! You did it, you son of a bitch! Jeff Bezos is getting divorced! <laughs> yes, he Jeff is! Jeff Bezos is a piece of shit! Jeff Bezos is someone that, that looked at the anarcho-capitalist system and he said, I'm gonna take this to fucking steroid levels. <laughs> Jeff Bezos... I'm gonna turn it up to 11. He's one of the biggest pieces of shit that America has ever known. And just when you think that he can't do it enough, he goes, I'm gonna make some deals with the American government. And you're like, no! But he does it anyway. And now we're stuck in the middle of this... This fucking... Disgusting web... Triggered. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is taking over the fucking world, dog. That's all I got. Jeff Bezos and Disney. He lost half his fortune. What I'm saying is, Bezos buys Disney. He lost half his fortune to divorce, and he is still one of the richest men in the world. The, the, he is the richest man in the world. I paid, I paid him yesterday when I ordered his wife uh, some stuff off of Amazon. Don't buy off of Amazon. I can buy it from Walmart. I buy almost exclusively off Amazon. (laughs) But yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> Nick Punisher. Is, Nick is broken temporarily. Uh, I'm on episode. I'm going on episode five. I started it last season night. two. Good season two so far is really good. Uh, you have uh, Jigsaw and Pilgrim are the villains. Okay, I remember you were one of the first people I actually got to talk to about Punisher on this show. Yeah, dude, because I heard it was really good, so I was like, it looks good. I like John Bernthal. I'm gonna give it a shot. So I watched it, and I watched it all in one night because I was, like, addicted to it. I didn't go to sleep that night. And me the Game of Thrones. And uh, that was how I was with Breaking Bad, the final season. I just wanted to finish it. I know we've talked about that, but I just... But anyway. I hate... I hate uh, we know. You hate Mr. Yeah. Cranston. Well, I, no, no, we no. I, I want to put... Uh, <laughs> I want to kind of put it in perspective. I hate Brian Cranston as much as Nick hates Jeff Bezos. No. I do. Sorry. <laughs> nope. I do. No. Yep. No. I have. I haven't I finished season two. I love it. It is a great show. I've watched season two, one and two. I, I haven't I, finished I season two. Yet. I stopped it's, watching. It's, oh man. I can't remember why I stopped I watching. It's so the Punisher. Show. I can't do it. But yeah, the Punisher, fantastic so far. I. Uh, story wise, it's uh, it started off very uh, very calm. And it was it was different than season one, especially the way season one ended. Mm-hmm. And then you go to no Brighton. spoilers. Please. I'm not going to give you a spoiler. And then you go to season sure. two, mm-hmm. and you're okay. it's very calm, different setting, and you're like, this is actually kind of nice. I like this. And then it just ramp it, it ramps up immediately, oh, and it absolutely. is and it's it's just great. Do you think it, we ever it see up like 100 percent after the second season? Do you think we ever see like? So as far as Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, the Defenders, which was fucking garbage. Um, See, I haven't watched any of those. I've, I've literally only watched The Punisher. I watched a, I watched a little bit of Jessica Jones and I watched a little bit of Luke Cage, but I've only watched Daredevil in entirety. So Daredevil was a good one. As well. So so I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I kind of forgot about it because I also haven't watched Daredevil. I haven't either. But Ooh, especially so good. Okay, so especially where the MCU's at right now, we're gonna have Captain Marvel, we're gonna have Endgame, and then Far From Home, and then as of now, that's all we've got. Yeah. Wasn't well, Far From Home coming out before the rest of them? No. no. Far From Home after. is after Endgame. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've got those three films. And then, as far as the MCU's roadmap, that's what we've got. 
we don't we don't know anything after that. We know potentially, you know, what they're talking about doing, what they could possibly do in the future. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Fantastic Four making their, you know, I their would, return. I absolutely love that. See, I hate the Fantastic Four, so... I, I wasn't a fan of the Fantastic Four either. To me, they're one of the original superhero teams. Yeah. So... Absolutely. And they're they're really known like as the original see, family. I would like to see John Krasinski as a... Uh, and as we've, a we've talked about that. Yeah, so if you're really going cool. to do, do Fantastic <laughs> Four, I think Krasinski's your guy for Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. But, but as fans of... And, and, and I'm going to include myself in this, even though I haven't watched them. Of the Netflix slash Disney streaming service, Marvel uh, shows, with the Punisher and Daredevil specifically, do you transition those characters with those actors into MCU 2? I'll label it. I don't I, think they need movies. I, I would. No, but here's, I mean, but here's it, the it, thing. It by themselves within, within the show no, alone. No, I get it, but... <laughs> Spider-Man and the Punisher have a relationship. Spider-Man and Daredevil have a relationship. They do. They do. Don't give them their standalone movies. Make more Spider-Man movies and bring fucking John Bernthal in where Spidey and the Punisher team up for a whole movie. Yeah. Because they have outright said that they're not going to have any Avengers films for a long time. They're not even thinking about it. Well, I mean, only, don't give us Avengers. Give us Punisher and Spidey. Give us maybe, Daredevil and Spidey. Tom Holland is... Avengers movie that's coming is Captain Marvel, right? Does say that again. It's not an Avengers movie. That's just the regular... Is that just the regular one? That's no, standalone. It's a solo. Okay, it's a standalone. So, so, it's like the introduction. so don't give us big superhero team-ups. Don't give us the full team. Ensemble. Ensemble. Thank you. The ensemble cast. Tom Holland is still at the beginning of his contract, technically. Well, yeah, I think is. with uh, what Get you're talking John about. Get John Bernthal and Tom Holland together on the fucking big screen. That'll be good. The uh, the small ensembles are going to be the uh, the things. They're gonna they're gonna continue with that. They basically did. They've done that since the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Where you know Iron Man three, you had for a very brief moment, you have Hulk in it, and then we go to let's recently Thor Ragnarok. Once again. It's Hulk, and then we get introduced to Valkyrie, Loki. I think. Um, I think those smaller. I think the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. I think Falcon. the Winter Soldier and um, Ragnarok are the two best examples of that. Mm-hmm. You could say Civil War, but that. I mean that's basically just another that, Avengers. That's movie. just another. It, Avengers. We originally all yeah. thought it was going to be an Avengers movie. Yeah, but at the end, I mean, I, it, it all plays in the part where it would just run for Captain America at that point. I in think my opinion. when it was originally announced, Civil War was an Avengers movie. I mean, it realistically is. On, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. originally, it, when we got the. When we got you, you've seen the timeline pictures of like, mm-hmm. oh, this this date, this date, this date, this date. It said are, Avengers Civil War instead it of did. Captain America. It did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it, when did it actually change to Captain America Civil War? Oh, like I don't think when they realized that Captain the, America Civil War sounds a lot better. I mean, like six months <laughs> I mean, before it, the movie, it, it worked as a as a Captain came, America movie. When it came to the end of it, it, it was more along the lines of a Captain America movie than an Avengers movie. I mean, it, I it focused on it, him it more. Sums up it at did. The end. Which, yes, at the beginning, the whole time, pretty much all the way up until, like, the last fucking, what, half hour, 45 minutes of that movie, it is basically, like you guys said, an Avengers movie. It has, it incorporates everybody, where it's like, oh, this is Avengers. But at the end, it also just incorporates, where it's, hey, no, this is, this is my boy from 1940-whatever. Like, uh, you know, I'm backing him <laughs> up, and it, and it turned into the Captain America movie, where they kind of made it all work in its own sense. Yeah. I'd say with the what you're talking about, bringing like John Bernthal, or I don't know the actor. That plays I, I can't Murdoch. ever remember his name. But, I don't either. But bringing those guys into, let's say, the Spider-Man films, I think it would be like a cool Easter egg, but not something that it does. I, I don't like think it needs as, full, a full movie. No, I would. No, I think and, it would and, just I be agree. cool. As, and, like, and don't get me wrong, I don't think up. that they need to be like co-star for the whole film, <laughs> but having some interaction with that uh-huh. character. That's what I mean, like small Easter eggs. Like I, think that, I think it would be, would be cool. Better. But I like them in their own kind of universe as like an MC, like e- not even a, MCEU. I, I guess it would be universe, an, I, yeah. it would be an expanded universe. Because but I would I like mean, them to introduce yeah. people. I don't like know about Blade. you guys, but when the Disney streaming service launches with all that shit on it, I'm gonna have it. 
Yeah. Period. I mean, yeah. well, I would like Sorry to say, about I w- you. I'd Star like Wars. to see them do that more. I'm with, which like, is stacked. Star Wars. Stacked. Star Wars is stacked. Are they going um, to follow all the like the the separate uh, They're they're moving or, on. Uh, they're moving on. They're doing two different series. One of which is it's got the guy from David Rogue, ben, Rogue David One. Benioff. Rogue and One. Weiss. Right, Jack, minute, yeah. The guy from Rogue <laughs> One that teams up with the yeah. girl and they both end up dying. Mm-hmm. He's the slum. Diego fucking, Luna. It's a story about him. And guess who is one of the guys in his show? The guy who played Oberyn Martell. Oh, shit. Bra oh, fucking yeah. up. Wait. Bravo. I thought he was playing the Mandalorian. He is. So they're connected. It's hard. Okay, so so they're, they're, they're mixing it. They're mixing it. That's cool. Because the Mandalorian is one thing, and it's Which another is the thing. One They've I'm got two, for. two Star Wars movies shows coming off the bat, and the thing to me is like, yeah, yeah, you don't need to make bullshit shows. I like your fun shows. I like the stuff that you guys come up with. You don't have to do Star Wars all day long. Well, like, absolutely. When Brandon and I first tried to launch the podcast Menace, one of the things that we were going to focus on week to week, or kind of month to month, I guess, was like um, really important characters from the EU that no one no one it's recognizes. Hard, it's hard they to to out. try to give people. A clear stance when there's not a clear stance with the company. Mm-hmm. So it, it, a character... between the expanded universe and the stuff that they accept as canon, right. it's super hard to understand. But like we all fucking know, spoiler: like Maul is in, yeah. uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn is in. Yep. Like they yeah. are, they are saying that these big fucking characters are in, and you have to let them do it. Uh, so yeah, like we said, this is a pilot episode. Um, we know you don't know us. Well, actually, you may know me. I uh, I'm from another podcast uh, on the Journey into Comics Network called Kids for Sale, where I talk with my wife uh, about our terrible kids and the stupid <laughs> stuff they do all the time. <laughs> and then <laughs> my boy Larry over here is my What's best up? friend. Hi. Uh, and we are in a band together called Get By. Uh, we've been in another band together before this, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't know. We've been in the music scene for Ever. a long time. Yeah, because we're yeah. fucking old. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're, we're. I think this is the official scene veteran age. I don't know. Is it yet, Was or do we have to get into our forties for that? Um, I don't know if it's actually age. It's just how long you've been around. I mean, I guess I've been in the music scene. Well, I dropped out of the music scene for a while. I did too for a long time. And uh but I, I got into the music scene when I was about maybe sixteen and then I was in it until, you know, I wanna say early twenties and then I got back in my late twenties. Yeah. So I was fourteen. Uh and did it till I was about twenty. Stopped until my late twenties. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm thirty something. I'll be thirty one on Monday, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just turned thirty three. I didn't. Why did I not realize before just the second that our birthdays were so close? Because our birthdays aren't significant. Because we're fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's really true. I don't even really get to celebrate my birthday much anymore. Mm-hmm. My my son's birthday is three days after mine, so it's so like, that's it's all his, your energy yeah, and all the my, cool. Shit. My birthday is just his birthday. That's but, cool, though. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it is fun. Um, but yeah, so for this first episode of Crucial Tunes, uh, we wanted you to get introduced to us and uh, the stuff we're into. So we figured we would go through and talk about our favorite albums of all time. Five of them. Five of our, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of albums. It was actually really hard to narrow it, it down to five. Mm-hmm. With And you know, it was hard for me was, and, and I'm, I think you had a similar issue, uh, trying trying to narrow it down to five albums that weren't in the same genre because like yep. I I listen to everything but it just so happens that like the bulk of my favorites are all like either metalcore or hardcore albums yep but 
so, so like when I was trying to narrow it down, I was like, well, I don't want to just do if I five talked about just albums. like five different saves the day records. No one's going to give a mm-hmm. shit or want to hear it. So, so we tried to spread them out a little bit and uh, make sure that we crossed the genre lines quite a bit. Uh, I, 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 and we have, we've barely previously talked about this. So we wanted this to flow. Like true. We're, we're discovering, each other's favorite albums tonight so that uh, this is because if it's yours aren't all metalcore and hardcore i have no idea what they're going to be besides <laughs> well the, uh beach boys probably they're they're mostly metalcore and hardcore but <laughs> but, but i threw a couple of uh curveballs in there but do you do you want to start with one of yours first um do you want to do our actual five or do you want to do five honorable mentions and just kind of buzz through them i guess we could do five honorable mentions okay that'd be fun uh thursday we're all the time Ooh, that's that's such a good album. Mm-hmm. So now, personally, I am a full collapse guy. Sure, just because I love understanding in a car crash. It's still to this day, my favorite song of all time. Um, but War All the Time was such such an incredible follow up to Full Collapse. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't think they could. Right, right, for sure. They fucking did. Uh, it's and it's that, that is a good honorable mention, man. I, I wish I'd have thought of that one. That's okay. I, I actually, when I was going through my list of my top fives, I was like, do I throw Full Collapse in there? But like, I mean, it's my favorite song of all time. And don't get me wrong, I love Thursday, but like, I, I just wasn't sure if I should throw the full album in or not. There's there's albums I like better, but sure. Um, Every song on War All the Time and Full Claps all sound the same. Yeah, I, I, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty fair assessment. I'd, I'd they're say. all about like broken glass or <laughs> something. Hey, man, of the r- sort. Write what you know. Yeah, and then they nail it. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? Now that so you got me thinking like of uh, older albums because uh, War All the Time was like 2003 September. It came out on my birthday in 2003. No shit, it did. Um, that same day at Saves the Day and MXPX also released an album. Really? Yeah. It was good. Was, MXPX album was great. Of course you would say MXPX is... No, they've released not great albums. <laughs> um, That's fair. Saves the Day album was okay. So since you're you're digging back deep, I'm also going to dig back deep uh, just because I, I don't know what made me think of this, but I'm digging down to 2001. Uh, when I listened to this album in high school, it was got it, it was one of my favorite albums of the year. Uh, I, and I don't know if it's something you're familiar with. As you know, my past, mm. I was very new metal in high school. So everything I listened to back then was new metal. And this was like right in the center of that new metal phase. Uh, Dry Kill Logic, the darker side of nonsense. Cool. I can't say anything about it because I've never fucking heard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's just banger after banger after banger for real. It's it's one of the best new metal albums I can think of off the top of my head. Now, okay, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say one of the prep, the best new metal album of all time. And you, I'll fight you if you don't agree with it. Maybe not you, but I'll fight anybody else. If they I don't have agree a strong opinion on the best new metal album of all time too. I, it's on my list. I, well. Mine is on my list, okay. but we'll we'll cover that later. So, okay. if you want to go ahead with your second honorable mention, um, Kanye West, Dark Fantasy, the full title, whatever. But yeah, see, I, I, I've uh, I, 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 I never really got into Kanye. That's okay. I, I I know everybody in the world wanted me to, and I just I, I could do a whole I, not just an episode. I could do an entire I podcast know, but, about. The life and times of Kanye West. I, believe me, I know you can. <laughs> He's got issues, man. He's misunderstood. Yeah, yeah I guess, but I, I don't know. I, I will not deny that the man knows how to produce a hit song. Uh, there's no, I don't. Nobody can deny that because no. he's done it time and time again for everyone. He also, yes. no one can deny that he knows how to grab the entire world's attention he, over nothing. He absolutely does. Uh, I just personally just is not my cup of tea. I guess. Sure. Um, if we're going along those routes now, uh, we're doing hip hop slash rap. I'm gonna go an honorable mention. Bone Thugs and Harmony, East 1999. Sick. Probably the, my favorite rap album of all time. Um, I don't. I don't think much needs to be said about it. It's. It's a classic. It's an. It's an absolute classic in the genre, and uh, the Bone Thugs are still to this day uh, my favorite rap group. Although they they dropped a new album. Was it just this year or was I it have last no year? Idea. 
and it it was not fun. I, I was oh, I was actually, I was really bummed about it when I heard it because I I wanted it to be good so bad. It, it was last year. I've always wanted to walk out live to me kill a real bad. Wait a minute. Was I think it? that'd be cool. Oh yeah, new waves was that it? New waves. New wave like like Devo. No, that's not it. Oh. Oh, was it? Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't know. All I know is whatever the most recent album was that Bone Thugs put out, I listened to it. And I think it was last year. And man, I just was, I, I could not get into it. Sure. And it happens. It, it was, I mean, it was really, it felt like they were just really digging to try to re spark that old. <laughs> I wonder if uh, it worked. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we We all know the answer to that already. Sure. But all right, go ahead with your next one. Uh, brother, sister, me without you. Oh, yeah. We just saw me without you a few months ago, we and did. God, it was amazing. It was amazing. Brother, sister, too. There's some parts in that album when you hear them, like in uh, in Masses of Men, the big "Oh my God" chant with the, yes. with the, the bells. I was actually just Woo! I was gonna mention Masses of Men because like I don't consider myself a religious person anymore. But whenever I hear that, like that one part of the song when he says, "If ever you came near, I would hold up high a mirror." Lord, I could never show you anything as beautiful as you. Just the 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 emotion in those lyrics and the way he shouts sure, it, sure. and just oh, it's incredible. It's mo- it's so moving. Like even if you are not a religious person, give me without you a try, especially brother sister. I th- I think that's a good introduction album for people that don't sure. know me without you. Because it's kind of in the middle of their sound. It's mm-hmm. got the old chanty Aaron Weiss, but it's also got the newer singy kind of Aaron Weiss. Well, newer is still uh, it's all well, crazy again. Now it's crazy again. But I, I mean, if you if you go through yeah. there, which I have not heard the new. Sick. I, I heard the new. Uh, th- so there was like two EPs that came out, mm-hmm. right? I think something like that. One they were both called Untitled. One was in lowercase and one was in capitals or something like that. Sounds about something they would and do. And the lowercase one was like a softer, mellower, and the uppercase one was supposed to be like louder and and like back to their roots a little sure. more. I haven't heard that one yet. I heard the softer one and it was good. Mm-hmm. I, I it was I was hoping for a little more, but it was well, good. Sure, but I liked uh, it though a lot. Yeah. But we're not here to review new albums yet. We'll, we'll get to no. that. We'll get to that another episode. But uh, oh god, now you brought up me without you. Mm-hmm. It was um, hard to pick which album of theirs I would put on here. Yeah, but I was going to say that one. I was going to sure. say, God damn, brother, sister, so good. Um, mm, I guess I'm going to throw a me without you album in on the honorable mentions too. Sure, but now I can't decide. Cause it's tough. I. I we we saw the reunion to, well not reunion but the the anniversary tour of AB Life uh which was their first album and god that album is still so so perfect but then they followed it up with Catch for Us the Foxes and I, that like made me fall in love with them they're one of those bands that like every album they put out it's distinctly them but so it is a, such a new sound for them, you mm-hmm. know. Like, there's no mistake. Like, you hear any of their songs, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's me without you." But then you, it's it's just n- completely not what was on the last album. So, it, man, it's so hard to pick one. If I had to go between the two, I, I'd probably go AB Life. Cool. I it's so raw. And it is, and that's it's guttural. And- that's that's something I tend to get into more is the old, like slightly underproduced raw oh, albums yeah. i like that sound i i don't like the the polished sound in the later albums that's i mm-hmm. tend to like the first couple albums just before they sure you know before they learn what they're doing better sure. <laughs> it just it feels like it means a lot more in the early days i don't know that's i get you though yeah that album's got so much just power and hellfire oh, bullet to binary i still remember the first time i heard bullet to binary mm-hmm Oh, uh, I was in, um, like a multimedia editing class with Tim, and he played it. Tim Barrett, or yeah, yeah um, that's my cousin Tim. That, What's up? <laughs> what up, Tim? Tim was in uh, a band with us called No Fences he a was, couple of years ago. He was. We were a a, uh, a punk rock Garth Brooks cover band, and 
God, it was tight, so, that man. was so fun. It was fun. That it was, was so fun. fun, and it was fucking easy, man. It was. <laughs> I, man, I wish we could. Uh, we we need to get a reunion going on that because uh, God, I would We've love been to talking do that about again. that for a year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will eventually. All right. What's your next honorable mention? Um. Uh, saves the day. Stay what you are. So saves the day is one of those bands I missed. They're I just still around. I I know. I it's it's too late. You no, know, it's not. Oh, I, so because because you were around during when the Beach Boys was in their prime too. Ah, that's, true. that's true. No, but it, like I grew up, I grew up on Beach Boys. That's why I still have like it's. I sure. I love Beach Boys more out of nostalgia than anything. Um, but Saves the Day is just one of those bands. Like I heard uh, at your funeral. That's the first song on this album. Um, I'm trying to remember what year that would have been. It was like on the radio and shit. Yeah, that was 2001. 2001. I was gonna say one or two. Mm-hmm. Um, because I remember being in high school and talking. There was a kid in my art class that liked Saves the Day, and he was the only kid I had talked to in school that even knew who they were. So that that's one of the reasons I couldn't get into them is just because I couldn't talk to anybody about them. And sure, like, I, that was one of the big. That was one of the big things uh. back back then for me was, you know, I, I like I, I'm one of those kinds of people. I can't just listen to something or watch a movie or watch a TV show or read a book or something. When I finish it, I sure. have to discuss with sure. somebody. Sure, and if there's nobody else listening to the same stuff, then I, well, I just I can't get into when it. I, uh, the, day, uh, the morning after I finished the second season of Stranger Things, mm-hmm. I went to work. I'm like, hey, did anyone else finish Stranger Things? <laughs> like, what? And I'm like, fuck! I have to leave. I have I to find somebody to talk to That's, about this. I, I so it, you know this is off topic, but let's just run with this anyway. Uh, that actually sparked a huge argument between me and Ashley, my wife. Uh, a couple of years ago, because for years and years and years, I didn't touch Game of Thrones at all. I didn't watch a single episode, didn't read the books or anything. Yeah, I've never seen it. Because by the time I even knew what it was, I was already like a season behind. And then the seasons kept going, you know, a, a couple mm-hmm. edits, you know, a couple more seasons passed because I didn't have HBO. And meanwhile, everybody that, like, out of my friend group that would appreciate, like, you know the nerdy people sure. that appreciate dragons and swords fights and blah blah blah. Yeah, they had al- they already all watched it. Sure, and they so, don't want to talk about so it. So they again. don't want to talk about it. So I just never started it. And sure. then I went to I went out of town for work or something uh, for a week. And then when I got back, Ashley told me that she had started watching Game of Thrones and she was like two or three episodes in. And I got so pissed because i was like (laughs) i was like i had no idea you would be into this sure i was like if i would have known we would have fucking started this together like a month ago it's time for brews with dudes ah juicy uh it's a dogfish head it says uh, it is a collaboration with the Grateful Dead. Um, it's called American Beauty. It says, A long, strange trip with the Grateful Dead inspired this pale ale brewed with granola, honey, and all American hops. So we saw that and was like, okay, yeah, that's it. Sold. And that's what we want. Instantly, I was like, oh, graham cracker. Yeah. Sounds like a graham yeah, cracker. sounds like it's going to be really awesome. So, oh, yeah. Um, the art's yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, looks like a little party. Right. It's got the two, it's got the Grateful Dead bears and they're clinking mugs and then looks like there's red, white, and blue little starries all around. It's, oh, it's called American Beauty, so yeah, it's it's definitely got that American theme. Well, enough talk to this, shall we? Yep, let's do it. It's not very often that we just do audio recordings nowadays. We're pretty heavily into the, the live recording. Um, yeah, I feel like that's all we used to do, you know, once upon a time. It, uh, the live recording has only been the past, oh, oh, like 15 maybe ep- episodes or so. It's, it's, it's relatively new. Um, we did the first at least 30 or 40 episodes just audio, but, uh, it's kind of nice. There's a little less pressure to be paying attention to the screen and interacting. Well, we love interacting with everybody, but. Oh yeah, it's great. It feels nice to just sit back, relax. Oh, yes. We're a little full from all the tacos. So many tacos. And those nacho fries. Mm. They were pretty good. Hit the spot. So you, this is a beautiful looking beer. You can oh, see yeah. right through it. 
Very um, great color. Yeah, my fin- I can definitely tell it's a finger through. It's nice and clean. It's got a caramel red kind of kind of hue to it. it. Smells pretty sweet. It smells very sweet. Let's dive on in to everyone listening at home and to Zach right here. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. That's not bad at all. No, I wouldn't say bad. No, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely lighter than what you would expect from Dogfish Head. You give it a nice chew. You can taste the uh, the granola. They specifically mention the granola. Uh, the honey. Mm. I'm really, really enjoying it. Yeah. Honestly, Spicy. it's... Yeah, and honestly, it's not super cold either. It's uh, actually been on the shelf, or not on the shelf, out on the uh, steps to next house, because it's like, oh, what, five degrees outside right now? Yeah, it's pretty damn cold. Um, yeah, I'm glad we picked this one up. It's nice. What, is it, what does it say? American hops. It doesn't really say in particular. I think somewhere it does. Somewhere in the back. Or in the very bottom. Hmm. Just a few notes. Um, appearance is golden amber. Aroma floral with notes of citrus, marzipan, honey, and melon. Flavors multi with notes of honey, toasted grains, and citrus. Definitely Pair- tastes the citrus. Pairs well with jambalaya. Ooh. Man, that sounds good. This with jambalaya, huh? I found one of my old charts that tells bunch of different styles and what it would pair with yeah and you'd be surprised what goes with what too uh, apparently the dark beers are good with like red meats from what I understand I have heard that mm. this isn't as uh, uh, I don't know what I was expecting from from honey and I guess I, I am getting a lot of honey yeah. I was expecting more out of the out of the uh, the granola not, yeah, it? but if you think about it, also granola is a very subtle flavor in and of itself. You know, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no. Okay, I mean, maybe I don't I'm, know. Maybe I don't know what I'm expecting. Perhaps I was thinking. Just when I when I heard granola, I didn't expect it to be like an overpowering taste. I think I was thinking of a graham cracker, because that is oh. another way that things have been explained. Yeah. In tasting, but that is absolutely not. I was, see, my brain was taking granola mm. and thinking graham cracker. So, now not I guess thinking, I did. Let, let me give it a taste without thinking that it's supposed to taste like that. I guess I was the one that mentioned graham cracker, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it but was. you're right, it is granola, and it's like granola is totally different than graham, and and I was ex- I was expecting a graham cracker taste, so maybe, mm. maybe my brain was ex- just, hmm, let's see what we got. It is slightly more enjoyable understanding what you're trying to taste. Be like, that doesn't it does right. make it really does make a difference. It's it's pretty good. I really like it. I don't know if I would go slamming through a bunch of them. Yeah. But, uh, Probably won't buy it again, but yeah, decent. Well enough for Dogfish Head. Hats off. Yep, that's true. Gotta say, there's very few Dogfish Heads that I'm actually impressed with. Quite honestly. The 90 minute, the 120 minute were pretty good. Uh, there's one 60 minute, because isn't there a few variations of the 60 it, minute? I don't know. I know there's 60, 75, 90, 120. That's true. They got a bunch of them. Uh, My favorite is the blood orange. Oh, no, I do remember that, yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it called? I don't know. But I really, really enjoyed it. That's that's the one I that I really, really like from them feel like anything that's a blood orange beer has just got me. If you do it right. Hook, line, and sinker. And they definitely did. Man, I can't just help looking at all these games that Nick has on his game shelf now. I'm going to have to play some of these on that new podcast of yours. I know. And Dave's. Mr. Linder's. Yeah. We, uh, we, he's, on, he's pretty much ready to start one of the D&D campaigns. Um... I am working on a dread campaign. 
We are working on, Dave and I are going to do a Star Wars Legion run through. Um, Brett and I, and I'm, I'm, I thought you might be involved, but we're going to do the Nemesis here soon. Yes. Um, we got a lot of content coming, and it's just going to come flooding in. Like, because most of the stuff we've done so far is most of it, all of it has been one episode. Right. But some of those games are going to be multiple episode kind of deals. And this spawns the series. Yep. I want to do because we've I've got I think three or four different Game of Thrones games. I want to do those leading up to the new season coming in. Oh yeah. Like right around April. Yeah. Ooh. And we've got that Robin Hood game. Yeah, I saw that. It looks great. Ancient Egypt Catan. Power Grid sounds interesting. I don't think I've even played it yet. No? No, nope, I've had it for a little bit, but I haven't played it yet. I want to do some Boss Monster. That one will be fun. Yeah, didn't you say you got a new uh, a new expansion? A new one's out. I haven't got it yet. Ah. But I've got, besides that, everything that Boss Monster's done, so... Lots and lots of boss monsters. And boss monster is pretty fun. Yeah, it's what it's you, a you're great trying game. to you're trying to attract little heroes to come to a dungeon that you've made, and the goal is to you know kill the hero. So, um, you get a boss, and then you have I think you get five rooms. Um, it's just there's so much fun stuff. It's yeah. a really really fun. And game. There's lo- lots of little additions. You get equipment and stuff like that. And yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Well, yeah. We're almost done with this one. Yeah. We just kill it off. Very easy to drink. Super smooth. 6.5%. Not too big. Would you like to give us a rinse? and we Give can us a little rinse. And I'll start deciding what we're going to jump into next. Do it! It's so freeing. Not having to worry about the video, just being able to hobble about. Okay, okay. Here we go. So, uh, Jess was kind enough to get me a little care package today on her way home from work. She's a sweet lady. Um, she picked me up a little, uh, four, a uh, mixed four pack. Um, and I'm pretty excited to get into a couple of these. We've got Bare Hands, uh, 7113 Classified Series, Strawberry Mango Milkshake. Double IPA with strawberry, mango, vanilla bean, and milk sugar. Yes, please. It sounds just totally amazing. Thanks, Jess. It's got a little fun text on the side. Let me, let me give you the flavor. What you hold in your hand is a rare specimen. This brew is handcrafted in the smallest of small batches with the finest attention to detail. Only the highest grade ingredients were used to deliver your palate something unique, something to leave you wanting more. We suggest you grab a friend or two, kick back, and enjoy what lies within this can. You know what, Bare Hands? I think we shall. I think we're going to do that. It's a feast. I paid. <laughs> uh, I can't get over the the freaking fast food feast thing. It's a magical uh, phenomenon. <laughs> uh, oh. It's nice and hazy. See a little bit of sediment still in it. That's, that's cool. A little bit of extra flavor. Yeah. I don't usually mind sediment. Sometimes it'll be like a, well, like a gritty texture to it. Yeah, sometimes. All right. Need just a second to situate myself. Oh, you get situated, Nicholas. All right. Well, like I said, this is from Bare Hands. Uh, up in northern Indiana. It is a strawberry mango milkshake. And I am salivating, so let's dive on in. I've rarely been disappointed by milkshakes. Especially, I've especially Ooh. not been disappointed with bare hands. Oh, yeah. They're usually spot on. Oh! Oh! Oh, my goodness. 
That is delicious. It's creamy. It's juicy. Mm. That the the fruit flavor just pops right at the end there. It's very, oh. Oh my goodness. It's hard to describe except great. Except amazing. Oh yeah. It's super hazy. You can't see through it. Nice yellow color. Very nice fruity aromas. Oh. Mm, the mango. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh yeah, it's the mango. Mm. It's amazing. This is another, uh, another <laughs> hole in one. So good. He's choking over there. I don't blame him. Um, my goodness, yes. Bare hands doesn't disappoint. Oh no. I am pleased to announce that. So you remember when I went up there and grabbed that allotment of special beers? Yeah. Um, somebody in town was selling an allotment, so I'm going to pick up another allotment. Oh. So I'm going to get, I'll have four of the peanut butter ones, the bombers, oh, which damn. were just amazing. Oh, yes. Um, and then one of each of the mail order brides and the different whiskey bottles. I'm so excited. We're going to actually be able to do an episode now because I was just going to hold on to a lot of those one-offs, but now that I've sure. got one of each. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I mean, you have it. Might as well. Might as well. I mean, we're gonna do just look at it. Would you just look at it? Uh, I'm okay with just looking at it, honestly. But you know, it's also nice to enjoy them, mm-hmm. as you should. And since you have two, you can have your cake and eat it too. Yes, sir. Boom. Hey yo. Yeah, I'm glad that I was able to clear out some of the games from that closet. So now, you know, the games can live by themselves and the beers can have their, <laughs> their own room. Like siblings. Have your little up. hiding spot. <laughs> yeah. Like, we needed we needed room to expand. There's definitely room for expanding over here. I could probably fill up this whole top to bottom bookshelf over there with the, with the games. There's still tons of games in there. Oh, yeah. I'm... I am convinced that you can do that. I'm excited oh. to get into some more more gaming. We got to get that. Uh, what do you have? Five minute Marvel. Five minute Marvel. Oh yeah. Instead of five minute dungeon. And we've got an expansion for that coming. A five minute dungeon. Yeah. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that goes. I personally is a big fan of a five minute dungeon. Really easy to play. Quick. It's very quick and it's excitable. Very excitable. Well, oh listening, man! Listening to a little bit of Pliny in the background. Uh, 2013's "Sweet Nothings." Um, it was good. It was quick. It passed by fast. 